What is happening guys? Cowboy here and we are back. So it took a couple of souls uh, just for the character update. As you can see, put a few points into vitality. Uh, of course, strength still at 24, which is where we needed it for the butcher's knife. Endurance at 16, vigor at 20. My next goal is to get the endurance up to 20. But we want to go over oh, here. How? We want to give her the ash we picked up. Either. Now we want to purchase the grave key for 1,500 souls. Okay. Now... The grave key. We're gonna head back to the dilapidated bridge bonfire, and then from there we're going down into the sewers. Now, um, I know that getting the NPC we're about to get uh, will allow the dude you saw with the hammer on the the way over to that tower uh, where we met the giant with the great bow. Will allow him to help you on bosses. I'm not entirely sure if it'll help with the great wood, but that's one of the reasons I'm trying to maintain my ember. Um, just Based on the mechanics of the uh, rotted great wood fight, I'm not entirely sure if you can summon help on that boss, so I'll be quite interested to see myself. So we're going to be running right down here. And you may remember we have the, the giant rat. She's right there. If you want. Just jump off. Boom. Kill her. Oh, that's nice. Thank you. So with that key, we are unlocking this door. Right here, pray to the statue of Elka. This is where you get absolution. Uh, basically, if you're playing as a red and you have sinned, that is where you have to go, and that is how you will remove your sin. Is it Halberd? These skeletons are a little bit slow on the upkeep. There we go, now they're finally starting to get up. So if there's anyone that's curious why I haven't parried, uh, this shield actually doesn't have parry built in. Your L2 um, gives you the weapon bonus instead of applying a parry, so just something to point out. It's not that I'm uh, avoiding parries intentionally, this just isn't a build that really utilizes them. And I'd have to get a different shield on. But I quite like this shield because applying the uh, sharpen effect on my butcher knife is more valuable to me than parries. There we go. Got the little bugger. Got our heavy gem. And we're gonna grab some stuff. Um, those two Titanite shards are actually the only two we need to now put our weapon up to plus three, which is very nice. So at this point, uh, with those, if you guys have been following along, you should have enough Titanite shards at this point, assuming you've grabbed all the ones that I have, to get a weapon to plus three. As you can see, we now have the six there, and we upgrade in groups of two, four, and six. So we're going to also do that before the final boss. Not the final boss, but before the boss fight for this area. Um, so next, we're going to go here. Uh, where is it at? One thing. Did I already knock it down? I, th I may have. I may have knocked it down earlier. Yes, I think I did. It was the item hanging on the... Nope, there it is. Okay. Fine. Don't want to forget this. Knock that out of the sky. Blessed red and white plus one. Right. Um, this room is just filled with rats. Grab the Saint's Talisman. Keep killing the rats. I think that's it. Any more? No? Are we done with our rats? Okay. So the rats are done. Go on one up. she is. And there's the exit. So, talk to her. 
Um, and this is the um, miracle NPC you can recruit. So just go through, touch her. <sighs> she wants you to touch her. Your prayer. Um, and then keep touching her. Well, talk to her, actually. Accept her service, and she will disappear. Now she is back at Firelink Shrine, and now she sells us miracles. Um, if we go outside now, and we talk to Dude Bro here. You've gone and rescued her, have you? How very quaint. Pitying creatures that are beyond help. <laughs> very well. I am Egon, a knight of Karim. I am allied to you for as long as you assure the girl's safety, and only for that long. What's I am? So, now he will help us during bosses. Which, if we want to... Um, wrong door. <laughs> the boss door is back over that way. Um, so at this point, we are ready to go do the boss fight. Uh, one other thing I want to show you guys while we're here. Probably a good time to do this now. Um, so we're going to go... Hop on the elevator and take it down. Oh, roll off. Um, and the reason for this is after we take out the Cursed Great Wood, this is going to be the next area we're going to go to. So it's worthwhile grabbing this bonfire now so we have it for when the time comes. Now, uh, at this point we are going to encounter a mini boss in the form of the Frost Knight. The Frost Knight can be quite deadly if you're not careful. Um, Shields certainly do help a lot here. Make sure my rings are good. Um, as you can see, that door is already open. We actually sprinted past him earlier to obtain the butcher's knife. As you can see, quite an aggressive enemy. Um, as long as you're careful, though, you can take him down. Um, and in a sense, I think these guys are supposed to be the the new equivalent of um, kind of the Titanite demons from Dark Souls. If you remember how the Titanite demons kind of served as gatekeepers, if you will. Um, bit of a, um, you know, skill level check, like whether or not you should be in the area that you were trying to progress to. And in a sense, the Frost Knights serve uh, a similar purpose in Dark Souls 3. We also get a really, really badass straight sword off of him. Uh, there's a couple of Irithyll weapons. They all upgrade with Twinkling Titanite. But they are quite good. Uh, they apply frostbite damage, and the other thing is they have this uh, nice little snowy twinkling animation. So some people might get get tired of it, because it looks like you're running around this Santa Claus or something. But anyway, um, point is, after you take him out, or even before you take him out, pop open this door, and right here we have a bonfire and the Road of Sacrifices, which is going to be the next area, which we start in the upcoming episode. So at this point, we are now going to hop back to Firelink. We're going to upgrade our weapon. Um, following upgrading our weapon, we're going to go to the cliff underside, and then we're going to go and take out the boss for this area. I just want to say I love how clean this walkthrough feels. <laughs> like, between watching my, my uh, Let's Play series to remember where stuff is, and then in addition, playing through the area on stream, it just feels good. It feels good knowing where all the stuff is. It's a great feeling. Okay. Um, nope. Wrong thing. Uh, reinforce. Yes. Yes. Now, the one thing I do want to mention while we're here is, as you see, you don't see the butcher's knife here, and you can't... Um, you're unable to infuse the butcher's knife. Uh, I think it's because of how powerful the sharpen effect already is. In a similar manner, as you see, I can't put on charcoal pine resin onto it either. So do keep that in mind with the Butcher's Knife. While it is an awesome weapon, um, that is a bit of a drawback to it. That being said, I'm really, really feeling that giant machete that I got to drop. That thing is super awesome looking. And um, once I get a little bit of, of uh, dex up, there's a good chance I'm going to be using that thing. Um, good old Great Club, of course. Still a great A ranking weapon for smashing people. Well, when upgrade an A ranking weapon. Great machete just looks really badass. I want to use it. Um, so now this is upgraded. Uh, real fast just to check. No, we do not have enough souls to level up. So that's fine. Um, we're going to rest. And it's time to go take out a boss. I'm actually quite curious to see because I don't know if you can have a uh, summon help for this boss. Just because of the nature of it. Um, with the boss having very specific sweet spots you can do damage. I'm not sure if they were able to program an AI intelligent enough to accomplish that. So it'll be interesting to see. 
even then, this boss isn't that hard as long as you know what you're doing. Um, there's two phases to the boss fight. First phase, he's going to be up top, and there are going to be enemies assisting him. Um, after you do enough damage to transition into phase two, you'll drop down. Um, at that point, he gets slightly more aggressive with his attacks, and you just continue on with attacking the, uh, the various pus sacks, I guess we'll call them. And uh, once you get enough damage into pus sacks, similar to phase one, they will pop. And then from that point, you are able to go for after a new pus sack. Do enough damage to all the sacks, they all pop, and he falls. Run up this way and get that one last item. Cannot miss anything. Just have all the items. And I think think that's all the items for this area. Looking at my list, it's everything I had written down. Hope I didn't uh, forget anything. Let's see what these say. A transposing kin lies within the belly. Great curse ridden tree ahead. And I do not see summon signs at all for this boss. I mean, as I mentioned, I, I didn't think there would be, but I was curious, um, just because I hadn't seen any on other attempts. Would have been nice to have some help here. Uh, either way, let's look at this real fast. I don't know. I'm not sure if this just has a... Uh... Oh, no, I just I suddenly got a, uh, a fake wall vibe coming from that area, but apparently not. Anyway, into the boss fight we go. So, um, until we get over there, the big tree won't activate. What I would suggest doing is heading straight over this way. We have one red-eye enemy, and you'll want to take him out before the fight starts just because he is going to be the, the harder one of the group. Whereas most of them die in one to two hits, he takes a few. Right, at this point, try and get down whatever you can. Uh, the more guys you have dead, the easier things are going to be. As the tree begins to get closer, he will start stomping, um, and that can kill an enemy, so don't be afraid to kind of bait them towards you, as you see like that. Now, um, something to keep in mind is that these enemies will continue to, to kind of fall down and join into the fray, so you don't want to be overly concerned with just killing the enemies. I would try and get as many as you can down. Um, he'll knock quite a few out completely on his own, but you do want to have a clean window before you go after it. So right now, there's only one left, I believe, and we need to run and hit these sacks right here. Watch out for butt smash. Uh, now he has his acid all over the place. I would suggest just tanking through the acid and getting the damage into the sacks. As you can see right there, getting right up on them and destroying them was enough pop them, and at this point we're going to transition into phase two. The floor will cave out. Rest assured you won't take damage from the fall. And at this point, just go ham on whatever you can. You can see there's a sack there on the ankle. Got that one nice and quick. Um, the ones on his belly are probably the hardest ones to get to because he will have a hand that comes out and attacks. Ooh, and the hand grabbed me. That's the one attack you really want to avoid. Thankfully, we have uh, pretty heavy armor. So we're going to keep focusing on the stomach sacks. All right, we got the stomach sacks. That's good. Roll back on out. Have some sippies. And at this point, the fight is going to be much easier. The stomach sacks, as I mentioned, are the biggest threat, in my opinion, here. Uh, we have some back ones. We already got the one on his one angle. That is it. The Cursed Rotted Greywood is down. 
So like I said, it can be a difficult fight if you don't understand the strategy. Um, <clears throat> but as long as you take out the, the sacks, you should be fine. Um, like I said, taking out that, that stomach one as fast as you can will help you out a lot. Um, on previous attempts, I usually hit the, the back and the arm and the ankle and then go for the stomach. And by that point, it's a little riskier because I feel like the stomach's the hardest one to get. So because of that, I feel it's easier to knock that one out first and then that way you can be more avoidant. But as you can see, this is the Mound Makers guy down here. So um, I'm not entirely sure. I have a feeling regardless of if he invades you or not, um, he's probably dead during this fight because I know I, don't, I did not have that exchange in the Let's Play series and he was also dead here. So either way... Uh, light the bonfire. And we are heading on back. So you may have noticed we received an item <clears throat> transposing kiln off this boss. A uh, very important item. This is what's going to allow us to uh, change boss souls into weapons and spells. So, we are back at the shrine. We're going to run on up this way. Here's Ludleth. Talk to him. Fred. Give him the transposing kiln. The now we can now make boss weapons. So, I'm um, off of that, uh, that last boss, the Rod of Great Wood. You have the Hollow Slayer Great Sword or the uh, <clears throat> Arstor Spear. Um, both of them kind of with a, a dex orientation. That being said, the Arstor Spear is a very good choice if you're doing a dex build. Um, in addition to being able to split shields and having some poison damage on it, defeating enemies restores your HP, and it's a pretty significant amount. So in a similar manner to how I'm regaining health via the Butcher's Knife, uh, the Spear does a, a very similar thing, but for dex builds, making it a great option to pick up. Uh, of course, being a strength build, we're going to pick up the Great Hammer, because I didn't get that in my other playthrough. Even though you see the Demon's Great Ask and the Demon Fist, you won't actually um, run into the, the Demon that drops that soul until a bit later, so keep that in mind. Uh, and I'll pick up the Great Sword as well, just for shits and giggles. And then, of course, feel free to go and level up. Um, I actually want, like, one more point just so I can put my helm on. I'll probably get my vitality up a bit higher in general. And get some of the endurance. And I should still be below 70%. Let's take a quick peek. And where is my weight? Equipment load. I need to see actual percentage. There we go. 68.9. Perfect. Um, so, at this point, we are completely through the Undead Settlement area. As I mentioned at the uh, the first episode, definitely one of the longer areas with all the, the various things to do. Um, one other thing I should touch on. Um, as you may remember, we got a couple of NPCs. Um, we now have the Pyromancer. He is over here. We now have the uh, Miracle Lady that we rescued. She is over here. Um, the thief that we got, you may remember <clears throat> he was talking about giving a ring to Loretta. We picked up Loretta's bone earlier. Make sure to come on over. Give him Loretta's bone. Heavens. She was already dead. Thank you. Almost ready. You can keep the ring. As. As. Goodbye. Uh, if you come back later and talk to him, you can get a gesture. Um, and over here. We have an important decision to make. So, um, we can use Yol to draw out our true strength. Now, drawing out the true strength, uh, it effectively gives you free levels. You can do it five times, but it will hollow your character. Um, going through my the, the Let's Play series, I wasn't able to notice any um, real like deficiencies from being a hollow. It doesn't reduce your health as it did in Dark Souls 2. Um, so as far as I know, I believe it's only an aesthetic difference to your character. That being said, you do need to be hollow to achieve the third ending to the game. So whether or not you want to draw out strength is up to you. Um, just to keep things different um, in this playthrough, I might not draw it out. Honestly, I probably will, just because I think more people will be interested in seeing the third ending, which 
you know, is kind of harder to get and a little bit hidden. So either way, something to keep in mind. If you're drawing out safe, you will go hollow. Your character will be all naught and, you know, face drawn out and things like that. Um, so aside from that, the only other thing... Go. Just running through his dialogue. We're going to go back here. And as you remember, we gave her the ashes. I didn't really look through items too much earlier, but in addition to the key, you can see she has a couple other things in stock now. So we have prism stones. Um, you know, she has heal aid, fair and dart. Uh, a couple other things that are, are being shown up now. The torch as well, if you want to get a torch, which I'll actually pick up. Not a bad idea to grab a torch. And either way, we'll wrap things up there. So moving forward from here, <clears throat> the next area we are going to be tackling Another rather big one, and that is going to be Road of Sacrifices. So, Road of Sacrifices is a bit of a turning point in the game. Um, you can split off here to go into two separate areas, uh, both of them rather long. So, from here, things are only going to get more in-depth. But either way, guys, thanks for coming on by. I hope you are enjoying the walkthrough so far. Um, definitely a different change of pace doing a very structured walkthrough on this. It's uh, kind of different from what I usually do. But either way, we will catch you with the next episode.